Please take this opportunity to share this, this broadcast to your friends and family and welcome to, for tuning in. First, I'm going to start just to quickly to say a shout out to a few people. Um, we got also global watching as well. So we just want to say to, uh, I'm not going to say any names because there's too many uh, uh, names to, to, to uh, mention. So I'm just going to say the countries. It's a lot of pastors and evangelists what is watching the show and they are supporting the show as well. So I want to give a shout out to Israel and to Pakistan, India, wow. Mexico, wow. Canada, America, Dubai wow. and from Portugal All Nations Ministry. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. I know normally you're going to watch this program a bit later. But I know the people from Israel, they are watching now. Amen. So welcome everybody. So please share this broadcast. I am so honored and privileged to sit here tonight with my spiritual father, Amen. Apostle Dr. Siva Mutli. What an honor to have you on Talk About Jesus talk show. Amen. Thank we, you for having me on the program today. This is actually it's a The honor time. is all mine. <laughs> yeah, it's, thank you so much to oh, be on the show. Wow. You've been on our show in December mm -hmm. and it was powerful people. It was wonderful. Please go and look at the uh, broadcast that was last year in December. And, uh, well, we did get to your testimony. We just started preaching. And, and God, and just, took over. Preaching God just took over. God took over. Yeah. So the people wanted you back on the show. Amen. So we got him back on the show. So Amen. welcome, everybody. Wow. 
Wow, it's such an honor to be here on the show with you. And I just love your program. Oh, and, thank you. And I know, and I feel honored because you get all the A class people, you know, like the A list. Is that the A list? <laughs> yeah. A so I have made it to the A list. Amen. Yes. I've made it to the A list. So that's a promotion for me. That's wonderful. <laughs> and I just want to say to the people out there, I know it looks strange. It's a different setup. Uh, I'm here at uh, uh, Apostle uh, 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 Church, and thank you for let we can do it here at your Amen. stage. Yes, you know it feels a little bit different than, yeah. than my little studio, but only can take ten people. We've got an audience here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's wonderful. Wow. You guys can clap hands. So if you, wow. <laughs> Oh, it's so wonderful. Wow. Welcome each and everyone who's here. Um, you know, we do this. This show belongs to Jesus mm -hmm. and the Holy Script. He writes the script. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's just an honor to do this work for our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so, yeah. the first question is, how did you get saved? Wow, okay. <laughs> well... Um, I come from a, uh, another religion, another faith, and in my, uh, 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 well, my previous faith, rather, and in that religion, uh, there is a caste system, and uh, I am what they call, we are from what they call the Brahmanite caste, which is, you know, it's, it's the Brahmanite caste is, caste is the, that's like the highest caste level, you're either a king or you're a Brahmanite. So what that means, Brahmanite, means that it is like, in terms of what we understand from the Bible, that's like a, um, uh, being a Levite. Yes. Right? So what happens in uh, uh, many of our families, uh, we're we involved in, the, in terms of the spiritual aspect of the faith. So my father used to train the priest in the faith and uh, he would educate them and we would study the religious books on that faith and uh, so from a very young age we had solid, studied and understood all the different prayers, why they pray this way and why they do that and why they do, do that and once you, you know, once you grow up in that environment what happens is that you, you kind of um, you believe like this is it, this is everything. And for a long time, it kind of felt, you know, we heard about Jesus, we heard about Christianity, but it felt like something that was too easy, yeah. <laughs> you know, just too simple, you know. Yeah, you and, and it wasn't for us, you know, it wasn't like really real, like we were doing the right stuff. But, you know, uh, Johan, as we got older, uh, I think God began to work on with us and my yes. brother Cass and I yeah. uh, we are the, you know I'm part of uh, um, far, uh, seven children yes. and big Cass family. and I big family yeah. <laughs> and Cass and I are the two youngest so I'm the youngest and he's just before me and uh, we you know there, there was once a um, uh, like a prophetic thing yes. where the, the, the deities of this religion were prophesying yes and uh, Cass and I looked at each other and we said this is not the real thing Jesus is the real thing <laughs> yeah but <laughs> so we kind of knew as we got older that Jesus was the right way but yeah. we were too proud we were too stubborn yes. and we were not willing to compromise and you know people get saved differently and I, and I guess the reason why people get saved differently is because uh, you know, God knows how to get to someone's heart. Cool. He knows exactly, you know, like a, like a parent. A mother knows exactly how to get to the heart of her child. That's correct. Because she knows, yeah. uh, if, if, you know, it, sometimes even as a father, you may say, Hey, Booty, how are you doing? Hi, son, how are you doing? And everything's fine. But the mom will say, Hold on, something's not right. What happened? <laughs> so, so God is like that. He knows us so intimately. He knows how to connect to us and what we need. So my story is a little bit different because uh, many people are trying to witness to me. They're trying to share the gospel and it just, I just had answers and I, and, and I was so indoctrinated in, in this faith that I was in that I would oppose them all the time. And, um, and then a family moved over from another province and, um, and uh, they were a Christian family. And in fact, they were going to the Reformed Church, Dutch Reformed Church, right? Yeah. And uh, 
So the, uh, the husband all of a sudden died. And, uh, and here was the mum and the, and the uh, three children or four children. Yes. And um, they didn't have anyone to take them to church. And uh, they said, hey, you know what? We've got this beautiful car <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you can take us to church and you can use it and come back and fetch us. I said, got a great deal. <laughs> so, so on a Sunday, I would fetch them, yes. take them to church. And while they were at church, I would go off and I'll come back later after church and fetch them. So you actually like Uber. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, uh, one Sunday, yes. one Sunday, I come to fetch them from church mm. and uh, the Dumini, the pastor, yes. is still having a service. Now, it's a small church. I mean, you know, it's a big building, but it's just a small congregation. Maybe about 20 people there. Yes. And they're all in the front of the church. And, they, and, and, and the pastor says, uh, let's bow our heads and pray. So, being a, a religious person, mm-hmm. uh, and when someone says, doesn't matter which religion, if they say, let's pray, you also bow your heads and pray. So, I did the same. So, while he was busy and they, I don't know what they were singing, what they were doing, but he was singing some songs and <laughs> reaching some message and, and they were praying and I bowed my head, I closed my eyes. When I did that, with my eyes closed, all of a sudden, mm. I saw Jesus right in front of me and I saw him walking towards me. Now, immediately, I opened my eyes to see, you know, like, am I imagining this? And with my eyes open, he's still there. And I started rubbing my eyes. I'm smacking myself. It's so like, you're like, <laughs> what's going on? And he came right to me. I could see him. And, and I don't know how to explain that I knew he was Jesus. Yes. It was something inside me said he was Jesus. I had obviously seen pictures, you know, of, yeah. of what he would look like. Mm. But, but I just knew he was Jesus. And behind his head, there was this glow right behind his head. Wow. And, and he looked at me, he stopped, he came right to me, and mm-hmm. right to my face, he looked at me. Mm-hmm. And when he looked at me, his eyes kind of like pierced me. And when that happened, something just happened inside me. I was like shocked. I, did, I was like in, a, in, a, in, a, in another world for, for a few minutes. And, and I couldn't understand it. And I experienced this intense love that I'd never experienced before. It was kind of like, it, he just poured this love into me as he looked at me and he smiled at me. And, uh, uh, you know, he, he never spoke to me, yes. but he did speak to me. So he spoke to me with his eyes, not with his mouth. Later on, he visited me again and wow. he spoke to me with his mouth. But <laughs> this is the first time, you know. So here I am, um, uh, uh, I have this experience yes. and I, I'm trying to understand what's going on. So there's a lady in our family, she's, a, she's a, what we call a prayer warrior. Yes. And, uh, and I went to her home and, uh, and I said to her like, you know, this is what happened. What does it mean? And she says, she started prophesying. And I, and I remember I'm coming from a background. I know nothing about Christianity. I don't even know what she's doing. She's like prophesying. She's saying to me, and I see this vision. You're on a stage. You're preaching to people. You're doing this. You're doing that. And I went, yeah, sure. <laughs> you didn't understand. I didn't understand what was going on. But that caused me, that, that experience, that encounter, caused me to go to church and to seek what I had experienced. Because I had never had a supernatural encounter like this. And so I went to church and I started learning about Jesus and, uh, and I started growing in God. Yes. Now, you know, a lot of times people say, I know the exact moment when I was born again. Uh, I don't know if it was that moment I met Jesus or if it was a little while later, yeah. but something happened inside me yes. that changed my life. It changed who I was. It, and, um, and I started going to church. I started... Uh, I got my hands on a Bible. I started praying. I started connecting to Jesus. And I was a very good Christian. And I tried to do everything that was right. <laughs> I left by all the rules. Yes, and, and, you know, and, I, and I served him. Yeah. And um, uh, then, uh, many months later, 
mm. about seven, eight months later, and I'm going to church. Uh, I'm trying to learn about Jesus, and, and the pastor will preach one sermon every Sunday. He'll preach uh, 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 about the, the um, uh, uh, he would say that uh, you must love the, what is the greatest commandment? You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And what's the second commandment? Love your neighbor as you love the Lord. Yeah. Now, that is the only sermon he preached every Sunday. Every, every Sunday he preached once. I'm serious. For eight months, it was one sermon. And he repeated the sermon every Sunday. So, you know, like, so yeah, I'm going in the church and, and like, yeah, and, and there's a few people in there and, and, uh, uh, and I'm a bit hungry, but I'm trying to fit in. Yes. I'm trying to fit in and I'm learning about this new religion. Yes. I'm learning about, uh, uh, you know, I'm reading the Bible and to pray and I'm still struggling yep. uh, to come to groups with a whole lot of stuff, but I'm learning, I'm growing. And so eight months later, I'm in university, yes. and um, there was a friend of mine who was a Muslim, and she, her father had died, yes. and her mother had remarried, and maybe this is helping someone who's watching me, <laughs> her mother had remarried, and had married a, uh, a, a Christian. Yes. And for some strange reason, a mother, maybe she was afraid or intimidated, whatever, but the mother had to actually abandon her because she had gone into Christianity. So I think there was some family pressure or whatever. Yes. So this girl was abandoned and, her, uh, and she, she ended up in some kind of orphanage and very quickly her grandfather was a Muslim priest uh, taken her in. Yes. And so you had a case now which is unique because one, her mother, who is a Christian, yes. had abandoned her. So how do you talk to someone about Jesus who, who has experienced abandonment from a Christian? That's correct. Right? Yeah. Secondly, she'd been indoctrinated in, 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 in that religion. And, yes. and, uh, and, you know, I didn't know much of the Bible. Even though I'm going to church for eight months, yes. I don't know much about the Bible. Uh, the yeah. only sermon I know is, is the Great Commission, <laughs> right? That's the only sermon I know. I don't know. In fact, that's probably the only scripture I know. So anyway, here I am. I'm sitting... And, and, and she's feeling very down, and I want to tell her about Jesus. Yes. So I'm trying to find something to tell her. I don't really know much scripture. And then I'm thinking that, and I'm trying to logically work everything out now. Yes. And I'm thinking, oh, hold on. Um, will she understand if I even share something that I read? Yes. Because, you know, she's not in this faith. Yeah. So, like, you know, like, will it make sense to her? And I'm trying to, I'm stumbling, I'm struggling, I'm, trying, I'm yeah. mumbling, I'm saying the wrong things. And all of a sudden, I heard a voice. And the voice spoke clearly to me. And it spoke inside my head. And the voice said this words. Step aside. I will show you how it's done. Wow. Those, that exact phrase. Wow. Step wow. aside. I'll show you how it's done. Yes. Now, when you talk, you know you're talking because your brain controls your mouth. Right? <laughs> yes. I mean, you, everything you're saying is coming from your brain, right? <laughs> yeah. For the first time in my life, my mouth started to open and close. And the most beautiful, encouraging words started to flow out of my mouth. Wow. I was amazed at what my mouth was saying. Yes. But it wasn't me speaking. My mind was listening to my mouth. Wow. Right. That's, that's like amazing, that's right? like eerie stuff, I know. You know, like that's like, <laughs> like free, that's people, freaky yeah. stuff, freaky stuff, right? <laughs> so anyway, I'm listening to what my mouth is saying. It's it's it's, I'm, it's blessing me. Yeah. And you know, it's not anything that I know, yes. not anything I would think about. Differently, it's not me. Yes. But it was so powerful that what came out of my mouth, that this girl wow. turned around. Started crying, she gave her life to Jesus. Wow. Right? And just to, just to tell you a little bit about her, after she got saved, yes. God restored her to her mother. Wow. And, she, and, you know, and, and she had a new family, and there's a new family. Oh. And she went to Bible school and so on. But for me, I had this experience. Remember, I'm coming now from an environment where the only sermon I heard is the <laughs> Greatest commandment, right? That's the only sermon I know. So now, I have my mouth speaking. So I go home, lock the door. Get in my bedroom, lock the door. And I said, Jesus, what is going on? This is not normal for my mouth to speak. 
Am I possessed? This beautiful word. It's beautiful word. So I said, first I said, am I possessed? And then, then I said, no, I can't be possessed. The devil won't get people saved because I'm, I'm going to logically work all these things out. And you might use nice words. Yes, they're such beautiful words. And so I said, Jesus, what is going on here? Yeah. And the voice that spoke to me earlier the day spoke again. And he said to me, open your Bible to the Gospels. And open to the book of Mark. And when I opened, he said, go to the scripture. And the scripture like came out. And this is what the scripture said. Like and I'm just paraphrasing the first part. You'll, call, you'll be called before different people to be witnesses for me. Amen. But at that moment, yes. do not worry what to say. Amen. For... It will not be you speaking, but the Holy Spirit through you. Amen. So when that happened, my first reaction is, who are you, Holy Spirit? <laughs> because I only knew about Jesus. I heard about the Holy Spirit, but we were told he, like he's a yeah. hit. You know, like he's like not important. He's, he's like a puppet. So don't even bother with him. Yeah. You, you know, you just look at Jesus and the Father. That's it. So... I said, who are you, Holy Spirit? Yeah. And that started an adventure wow. that has lasted over 30 years. Yes. And, and he became my best friend. Yes. And he started to teach me the word of God. You know, he, I, I, because I lived in a home where I was the only person saved. And, uh, and you know, in those days, let, let me say to somebody watching me, I was the only person saved. I believed, Joanne, I believed yes. that... My family won't get saved. They were too big a sinners, too big rotters. <laughs> Everyone else will get saved, but they will not get saved. Yes, right? Yeah. Right. So I'm in this house, and when I come home, uh, uh, now it became a little bit difficult. Because remember, there's two kingdoms clashing here now. Yes. And maybe someone watching me, you in a situation like this, where uh, maybe you're the only person that's saved in the house. Right? So yes. there's two kingdoms clashing, and uh, it becomes very uncomfortable. So I would go for uh, all-night prayer at my, at, at my church because now I moved from where I was into a charismatic church because I met the Holy Spirit. And when, when I got back to my old church, I went to church. I was bouncy and excited. And everybody turned around and looked, what's wrong with you? Yes. You're not supposed to be excited in church. What is wrong with you? <laughs> you must be, something is wrong with you, you know? Uh, so anyway, I, I ended up in a charismatic environment. And, uh, and again, you know, remember, I'm very green. I don't know. When I heard people speaking in tongues, I thought there was a Bible school that taught them to speak Hebrew. <laughs> That's how, how bad it was, you know, yeah. how far I was. So anyway, I'm in a charismatic church. Yeah. Where they'll have Friday night, all night meeting. Mm. When I would come home and, and I would say, good night, Holy Spirit, because he's my best friend. Please. And all of a sudden, down the passage in this home, someone will manifest in the house in the house i would hear them screaming wow. and and i'm talking like sometimes if i come home at two in the morning yes. and and the moment i speak to him i you see you see you remember in those days uh his presence didn't uh, you know there was no benny hin and Catherine coolman that we could yeah. follow and you know that we yes. could under read from understand yeah. so uh, uh and, you know, the things that we understand now, we didn't really understand them that well those days. So what I didn't know is when I would greet him, that his presence was so huge, yes. it would fill the whole house. Wow. And nothing demonic could even come near my bedroom. And I didn't realize that. No. You know, like, so for me, it was like, I, I was just waiting, who's going to scream? <laughs> Who's going to scream next? You know what I come? <laughs> right, and I said good night. But I knew it's going to happen. Someone's going to manifest. Yeah. Right. So it kind of got. Uh, how many people were in the house? Right? right. Let me count. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of us. It's a big house. It's a four bedroom house. Four bedroom house. I've got my own room. And. Uh, and um, and my room has got all these big speakers on, so I just worship the Lord all the time. Wonderful. But next door, uh, in fact, two bedrooms down was my, was my brother-in-law yes. and, and so on. So anyway, I heard he would, he would, these people would manifest all the time. Wow. And uh, then as I spent more time with the Holy Spirit, 
people in my house couldn't look at me. Because, yes. And, and I don't know what was going on. You know, as I said to you, I'm green yeah. because no one is teaching us what's going on. There's no revelation and, and from people. So anyway, uh, this presence of the Holy Spirit began to increase. And it was strong. It was strong. Mm. And, and he started taking me deeper and deeper. So I would end up some days up to 16 hours alone with him wow. studying the word and his presence and okay. he would pick me in the air he would throw me on the bed <laughs> and i don't know you know like for me it was like fun because remember now yeah. you're coming from one world exactly. where where religion was all practice yes and now you have a relationship with someone yes. that's teaching you that's loving you that's guiding you that's speaking to you and it, and he's like a crazy guy just as crazy as you are because yes. he's doing all these things so his presence uh, uh, would just engulf me. Wherever I go, his presence would come. In fact, uh, uh, I'm not sure if I shared with you the story of, of, of Jesse and I. And, and Jesse and I, we were uh, cell leaders in this church, the same church. Yes. And uh, uh, one of the days I went to drop her off at home. Yes. And, well, actually, all the time I would drop her off at home, her and her mom. But they never invited me down to the house. <laughs> I was just like a taxi service. You drop them off and that's it. She just dropped them off. Just drop them off, taxi. <laughs> bye bye. Night, thank you. Till next week, Wednesday. So, anyway, one day after, after the cottage meeting, the cell mm. meeting, her mom said, Don't you want to come down and have some coffee with us or tea yes. with us? I said, Yes. Well, why did I say yes? Because, to be honest, I was so curious. What is going on in the house? I've never been in there. I want to see this house. Yes. I know the people, but I, I, I want to go to the house. So I get to the house. We sit in the couch, and I'm on this side. Yes. And, and she's, you know, it's, not, it's a small lounge, and I'm on this side, and she's on the other side. We're just talking generally, yes. generally about stuff. And uh, nothing spiritual. We're just chatting. Yes. Mummy's in the kitchen making us some coffee or tea, whatever. And we were speaking about maybe five minutes or so. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. the atmosphere in the room changed. Wow. It became cloudy. Yes. And I saw Jesus. The same Jesus I had seen a few years ago before yes. that. He walked into the room. He looks, now, now at that time, let me just say this. I had said to the Lord, when I got saved, I had said, because before I got saved, I was a pretty naughty guy, you know. So, but after I got saved, <laughs> yeah, when I got saved, I said, the person that, I, that I'm going to marry is the one I'm going to go out with. I don't want to date anyone. I, 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 I want God to bring me my wife. Yes. So I had met someone that was a pastor's daughter. Yes. And I thought, this is the one. Yeah. Because she fitted all the profile. Yes. But there was only one problem which later on I, I learned. When I said, God, is she the one? God kept quiet. He kept quiet. Now, later on I learned, God never keeps quiet when he brings you the right partner. He will move heaven and earth for you to know that's the one. The Bible says God does nothing without telling his prophets. Yes. So God always tells you. So now, that's here true. I am, I'm, I'm still dating this girl, right? Going out with her. I had met the parents, everything, right? Yes. And, and I'm sitting here in the home with, with Jesse, and she's on that side. I'm on this side. Jesus walks in. He looks straight at me, and he says to me in a voice that was so clear, so loud, so audible. He said to me, this is the person I chose for you to marry. Wow. I am Now, Shoot. you must understand, it's, it's kind of like a traumatic moment now. Exactly. Right? I hope this is helping someone. It's kind of like a traumatic moment because Jesus first... Because <laughs> first Jesus comes in, yes. right? He's there. That's the first thing. Yeah. Secondly, he's speaking to me. And I'm hearing him so clearly. This wow. is the woman I want you to marry. Third, Jesse is a very stern person. You can't tell her, Jesus told me I must marry you. She will smack you until your face is red and blue, whatever. Right. So, in all these things that happened, yeah. and, and it, as I said, it was a little bit too much for me. Yes. I got up. And I said to Jesse and her mom, I have to go, I have to go, I have to go. And I ran out of the house. <laughs> I, the first time I came there, I ran out of the house. I what jumped into my car. <laughs> <laughs> Jumped into my car. Yeah. And I drove down the road. I probably drove about maybe 100 meters. 
peace. And the presence of the Lord followed me wow. and overcame me in the car. And I stopped in the middle of the road and I'm shaking under the power of God. Yes. But as I said to you, I kept it quiet wow. because I don't want to tell Jesse, this is what God said to me, you know. And she said, what? You got one girl there now you think... <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> all these things. Because Jesse was, by the way, my counselor. She was guiding me. My mom even said to her, pray for this guy for, to get a good girl. So I don't know how she prayed. Maybe she said, I take it now. And Jesus said, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> but anyway, I kept quiet about this. Now, uh, uh, Jesse comes to me. She says, something happened in the house. Did you feel that? I said, I, I said, yes, yes. Now she says, we need to get together and pray. I said, yes, that's a good idea. Yes. Because <laughs> I don't want to say anything. So we set the date. And I think if, I, if I'm correct, it was the following cell meeting, the following week. Yes. So we got together again. I didn't have my coffee. Yes. So I had to get my coffee anyway. Yeah. But we got together. And we are just about to pray. And Jesus walks in again. <laughs> Second see. time. But this time, he doesn't speak to me. He goes straight to her wow. and says to her, this is the person I chose for you to marry. Amen. Now she says, what? Him? He's like loud. He goes to university, you know, like this, that and everything. He's extroverted. And then Jesus rebuked her and said to her, he showed her, I think he showed you. He showed you, right? Mm -hmm. He showed her a vision. Several months before this encounter, yes. Jesus spoke through her pastor, who was also my pastor, yes. and said to her twice, because she didn't do it the first time. The second time, Jesus said to her through the pastor, go and write 10 points about the person you want to marry. Be very, very specific yes. about that person. So she wrote down 10 points. She had sown a seed and she had, and, she, and, and, the, and the pastor said, the first time she didn't do it, the pastor said to her, well, Jesus spoke to the pastor and the pastor said, you didn't do it, right? Because Jesus told me you didn't do it. And she said, yeah, Pastor. He said, go and do it. So the second time she did it, she prayed, and she put it in a, in a drawer in a bedroom. So Jesus shows her the page. And then, she, then he says to her, look, I've answered all 10 points. You had all 10 points. Yeah. Of course, she put two points that he, did, he, he didn't access. Right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> she said he must be tall and very handsome. So those two came in excess, but the other ones all were filled perfectly, you know. So, <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, she then put fleeces before God, and people all of a sudden, because I said to you, if God wants to tell you something, yes. He will make sure He moves the whole of the earth for you to know it. Amen. All of a sudden, people we don't even know started having dreams of us walking down the aisle. They started coming up to us. Once we went for a conference, and it yes. so happened we ended up at the same time. Yes. And the lady who was prophesying stopped and said, are you two married? And, and we said, no. no. And then she said, you're supposed to be married. And she carried on. You know, like so. And then eventually she went to her um, then spiritual mom. And as she's going to her spiritual mom, she said, this is the last fleece. Yes. As she's going to her spiritual mom, her spiritual mom says, yes, he's the one. You're like, you're like, so anyway, that's how we ended up with Jesus speaking to us. But coming back to the person of the Holy Spirit, I believe all these things happen because I allowed the Holy Spirit to become an integral part of my life. That's true. That's true. You know, if you, if somehow uh, we, we don't understand mm. that the Holy Spirit has been sent as a helper yes. and as a comforter. Yes. And he's been sent as our best friend because now is not the dispensation of Jesus or the Father. Yes. It's the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. Yes. So the church is supposed to draw closer to the Holy Spirit. That's true. By doing that, mm. the Holy Spirit in return reveals Jesus to the church. Yes. But what we've done is we've said, we, we don't want to know about you. We don't have anything to do with you, Holy Spirit. We want to know only Jesus. Yes. Because, you know, you know, even when it comes to prayer, 
Now, there's, there's 12 different forms of prayer, right? There's various ways of praying. But the most common form of prayer is called a petition. Yes. And the petition is made to the Father in the name of Jesus. Jesus. So somehow, we believe that all prayer is a petition, which is not true. Yes. Because there are different forms of prayer. Only a petition is made to the Father. But there's a prayer that you make to the Holy Spirit. A prayer that goes straight to Jesus. Yes. Right? And the Bible tells us about this prayer. The Bible talks us about the, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, which is a type of prayer. Yes. Right? A communion with the Holy Spirit is a type of prayer. Yeah. So somehow the church and the body of Christ has moved away from that. Yeah. And, and so I wasn't, you know, this, this church reminds me of, my, of how I grew up. And, and uh, sorry, am I, am, is it no. fine? I'm just going on. Is it okay? Are you enjoying this? You can stop me any oh, moment no, and ask me I'm any question. I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying it. But where you say where the Holy Spirit is in, at the talk show, yeah. every time before we start pray, um, and I had some of, some of my guests are sitting here what was on the show, yeah. and the Holy Spirit comes if you invite him in, because it comes it doesn't, in. this show doesn't belong yes. to me, it belongs to Jesus. Yeah. And the Holy, uh, uh, Holy Spirit, he writes the script. Yes. And I can't do this show without the Holy Spirit. Well, I, you yeah. know, if I have to do it, I will say sh stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same thing. Yeah. So here I am, I mean, uh, you know, I said I joined a charismatic church because I had this encounter with the Holy Spirit. He became my everything. And also remember, as I said to you, in my home, because I was the only person saved, yes. uh, I didn't have much people to talk to now. Because people couldn't relate to me, people could, couldn't connect. And sometimes we see that as a negative thing. But it's actually not a negative thing. Because we sometimes, you know, uh, as human beings, yeah. we love to fellowship all the time with other people. And you're like, that's why you go to a coffee shop, it's always packed with people, yes. because people want to connect. They want to connect all the time. But if you go through a, a, an experience where God disconnects you, yes. and, and all of a sudden the people who are your best friends are no longer there, people who used to he, hang out with you are no longer around you, yeah. that is actually not a bad thing. Yeah. Because sometimes that is a requirement for you to draw closer to your destiny. Fantastic. Yes. Because if, if, let's have an example. Let's just say I'm a golfer, right? Yeah. And, and, and I love playing golf. So on Monday I'm playing golf. Wednesday I'm playing golf. Thursday I'm playing golf. Saturday I'm playing golf. Now I'm doing all that stuff because I love golf. Yes. So when is the Holy Spirit going to have a chance to show me my destiny? That's I'm not going to find my destiny on the golf course. No. So what happens? He takes me out of that environment, mm -hmm. draws me away to an environment where I have no choice but to be one-on-one -on -one with Him. Yes. And when you become one-on-one -on -one with God, you see people say, I'm so lonely. No one can ever be lonely. No. If you're with the Holy Spirit, you can never be lonely. Yeah. Because you're not understanding, it's like you close one door, but you don't understand there's a door open and you're not going through it. Yes. You want to go back to the whole way. And so when you are alone, you get your greatest encounter with God. That's your yeah. greatest encounter because then you build something that's very important in the supernatural that's true something that's so important is called trust mm -hmm. now we always talk about us trusting god and we call it faith right yes. i trust god for that miracle faith yeah. but for god to walk with someone mm -hmm. for god to use someone for god to give you angelic visitations supernatural encounters mm. god has to trust you i mean that's true and that is completely Amen. different if you look at the story of elijah uh if you look at the story about ahab and elijah yes. the, and, and there were there were many prophets hidden in the caves so i know many prophets were available and maybe some of them even went to ahab but it says that a man a nobody a citizen of a little area, yes. uh, 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 a Tishbite, little area, he's not a prophet, because the Bible doesn't introduce him as a prophet. He's a citizen. It, it says that God spoke to that ordinary person yeah. and told an ordinary person, go and speak to the king, the highest authority. Now, you would think he'll talk to a prophet, but you must understand, God must have checked out a few prophets and a few other people. Mm -hmm. But he said, I can't trust any of them. Yeah. Now, I find this man called Elijah, 
He's an ordinary guy. But I can trust him. Because you understand the authority Elijah had. Elijah goes to Ahab. And he says to Ahab, you've been a naughty boy. You've really been a naughty boy. Now, because you were so naughty, I, Elijah, he doesn't say God. Yes. Right? He says, I, Elijah, am going to shut the heavens. So the heavens were not shut by God. They were shut by a man God trusted that gave, God gave power to shut the heavens. Mm. Because that's why Ahab went looking for, for Elijah. Mm. Because only Elijah, who locked the heavens, could unlock the heavens. Amen. And he had to find him. Yes. And that's why the king himself went looking for, 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 for Elijah. Yes. So, so that kind of authority, that kind of authority where you can call fire from the sky, that kind of authority is available for everyone. But the big question is this. Can God trust you? That's true. Yeah. And, and if he can't trust you, because sometimes people want, we, we use this word, we say they want to prostitute the gifts. So they say, hey, I have this gift. Let's see how much of money I can make through this gift. Yeah. Called spiritual prostitution. So when someone does that, God doesn't trust that person. When someone manipulates people to give, Right? It's witchcraft. Yeah. So let's say I come to church and I say, hey, you know what? I can't make it up to the stage. I'm so weak. I didn't have, my family and I haven't eaten for five days. And we don't have a lawn mower in church. Anybody wants to do it? And, 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 and. and so yeah. I make you so guilty. Yes. Or I con you into something and you give under compulsion. Yes. When yes. you do that, yeah. God actually can't use that person again. Because compulsion is witchcraft. It's witchcraft. Yes. There was Elijah later on in his ministry. He had a successful ministry. Later on, he turns to witchcraft. Hmm. Right? Where does he do that? When he comes, when, a, when, when, when Jezebel says, I'm going to get you. Hmm. Elijah goes to God and he says this, I am the only prophet left. No one else. Yeah. I'm the only prophet left. Right? First thing. Then he says, he starts to whine. And he's alive because he knows there's 100 prophets, 50 by 50, in both the caves. Yeah. But he's saying, I'm the only one that's walking for God that's left. And he starts to manipulate God. When he starts to manipulate God, we call that witchcraft. Yes. Right? So what, what does God do? God says, okay, lie down here. I want to show you something, boy. Yes. He makes a tree grow up. And Elijah says, ooh, I got it. I got it. I got, I got God to do what I want. And the next minute, the worms come and they eat the tree. Eat the tree. And he looks around. No tree. no tree. And God said, I want to show you something. That I'm the one in charge and you cannot manipulate me. Manipulate me. Yes. Because you've done this, your period as a prophet has come to an end. Wow. From now onwards, and read the, right there, God says this, I want you to go to a certain place. You'll find a man plying with 12 yoke of oxen. He is going to take over your ministry. Mm. So at that moment where he tried to use witchcraft, because witchcraft is three things. Witchcraft is domination, intimidation, manipulation. Yes. Whenever we exercise that, we operate in witchcraft. So what happened is that uh, God then prepared Elisha to take over the ministry. Mm. But it was because of what Elijah did. And sometimes we don't get that because we think, you know what, I've got to manipulate people for God. But you don't use witchcraft. No. Or I've got to tell people, you want a word from me, you pay me so much, I'll give you a word. That's witchcraft. Yes. And if you're not meant it correctly, you're not under a, 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 a covering and a teaching where people teach you correctly, yes. you'll just follow what everyone is doing. And when you get into witchcraft, the Holy Spirit departs yes. and yeah, a divination true. spirit comes. You start operating in the flesh. Yeah. Right. So, so the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of times people want to know, like, how come we see like, people being healed and raised from the dead in our meetings and so on? How is it possible? Yes. It's simply because God looks for a man or a woman he can trust. That's true. He looks for that. And only when he can trust you because he'll put many tests in your life. Yes. He'll put many tests. There was a time, because, you know, it's a glamorous ministry. Yeah. 
It's a glamorous ministry because people are falling down, getting healed, all those things, you know. It's on television, it's glamorous, right? Glamorous. So God looks to see if it's about you. That's correct. If it's about you. Yes. So I made a decision not to preach, not to be on a pulpit for over a year. Because I said to God, am I going there for people to see me or for people to see you? That's true. And so God tested me in that. Yeah. To see what was the motive of my heart. And then he decided to increase. Yes. So many times we kind of run ahead because we just read some book here and think this is the way it happens. No. There is what we call trust. And trust is the most important thing That's to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Like if I'm in a conference and someone grieves the Holy Spirit and he leaves, I won't sit. I'll get up and leave also. You say, but, but what about the word and so on? No. no. If you grieve my best friend, you have grieved me. Yes. I mean. You touch my friend, you touch me. It's like that. Yes. So it's that kind of trust that he has and knows that I will stand with him. That I will not abandon him. Yes. That even if, if I have to shout at someone and people don't like me, I don't care. I'll, I'll make sure I protect him as the person that, that God has placed in the house. So it's that kind of trust that is so important. And, and, and I know you have that. And yes. that's the reason why God always turns up in your show. Because yes. if you didn't have that trust, the, the, the bottom line is you wouldn't have the authentication. That's true. The, the fact that he turns up is actually a sign of because authentication. Last week, Apostle Mark, a spiritual mother who's sitting here, a, right. a Apostle Fatima from all nations. Amen. I'm such a, so honored to have my spiritual father, my spiritual mother, and my spiritual family sitting here. <laughs> um, but when we started, just before the show, but we, well, well, a week before that, the person said they wanted to cry before the show started yeah. Yeah. because it was the, the presence was yes. amazing and Apostle Fatima also said wow well, she's getting so hot here so I want to say something the Holy Spirit is saying right now yes. your program is gonna move from the internet to the television oh I mean and God's God is sending funding He's sending equipment oh. uh, He's sending bigger premises all oh. that stuff I mean. because you, there is, when God uses someone, yes. there's a period of testing. Yes. And where it seems nothing much is happening, but something is happening, but not really much growth. Yes. Then he says, I can trust you. And he starts to elevate because nothing happens mm. unless God builds it. Yes. If God doesn't build it, you can't make it. Amen. So we were talking about the Holy Spirit. I just wanted to share, if I can, yeah, one more please. story yeah, about the Holy Spirit. It. Are you guys enjoying it? Right. <laughs> so, so. Anyway, uh, so when we say I had an encounter with Jesus, yes. and then I had the encounter with the Holy Spirit, and I started knowing, growing with Jesus and falling in love with Jesus mm -hmm. every day, and I have my best friend. Yes. Now, here I am, I belong to a mega church. Uh, they got about 2,000 people, actually over 2,000 people in the church. Yes. And uh, Pastor Jesse at the time, she was part of the worship team, yeah. right in the back. And my job was to be a cameraman. So all you cameramans, I hope you guys are listening closely. So you were behind Listen the camera. Listen closely. <laughs> so I was a cameraman in the church. Mm. That was the only thing I did in the church. I was just a cameraman. Yes. And, um, uh, and uh, so this church, being such a big church, yes. they had over 100 cell leaders and their wives. They had lots of leaders and uh, pastors in the church. And they had a senior pastor who was very charismatic. And he would preach, or you'll get someone from overseas, some very big name to come and preach every Sunday. Wonderful. One Sunday morning, he comes off the stage and he's walking down the aisle. And obviously I'm standing at the end of the aisle with my camera. Yeah. And he comes and he stops right at me. And he says, I want you to preach next Sunday morning. Wow. So, so now... <laughs> I'm like, first thing I do is, oh yeah, sure. Yes. He says, no, I'm serious. I want you to preach next Sunday morning. Wow. So I said, okay. Now, I remember I had never preached before. Yes. Never. Uh, wow. I had, someone had called me to pray for a baby that had squint eyes. And when I got to the house, there was a whole lot of people there. Uh, there were Catholics. Yes. A whole lot of people there. And all nine gifts are operating at the same time. Yeah. And I laid hands on the baby and the baby's eyes moved and, and, you know, and all these miracles are taking place. But that is it. That's it. 
You know, besides that, I had never preached the gospel. Yes. Now imagine 2,000 people. So you don't have a small cell meeting, you know. <laughs> You're about 2,000 people, right? That's a lot. So, so what do you do in a case like that? Yeah. Uh, when I went to school, I learned that when you do speeches, mm -hmm. you write them out in little cue cards, right? <laughs> so I wrote out my message. Now remember, my message is not so much the word, it's my best friend. Because I want to tell everybody about him. Yeah. I want to tell everybody what he does, how he operates, how he thinks. Yeah. So I wrote on all these encounters, my testimony, on the cue cards. So I spent the whole week from Sunday to Sunday fasting. Yes. Sunday to Sunday praying every day. Yeah. And Sunday to Sunday standing in front of the mirror and memorizing my cue cards. Right. <laughs> so, so now... Sounds like me. <laughs> right. So now you must imagine it is Sunday morning. Yes. I could put on my good suit, because you know it's a formal environment, we always wear suits on a Sunday. Yeah. Got my good suit, I got my Bible, <laughs> and uh, the pastor first calls me to the office, and he says, well, we will give you the mic in praise and worship, yes. and, then, and then you preach for so long, and you can hand over to me. I said, no problem. Then, as we are leaving the office, he says this, and by the way, stick to the word. Don't share your testimony, just share the word. I'm like, huh? My whole message is my testimony. <laughs> what do I do? It's not like now where I can just speak. Exactly. My whole message is my testimony. So now I'm walking behind the pastor and I'm going like, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I'll have to disobey my pastor and face the consequences. Yes. Because I was trained, you know, you never disobey your pastor. Exactly. So anyway, I'm going to the altar, and the pastor is walking, I'm behind him. 2,000 people turn around, and they're asking, what is the cameraman doing in a suit, walking with the pastor? Right? So then I come to the front row, and all the guys, the cell leaders, and the leaders, the deacons in the front row, some of them are not happy, they start giving me dirty looks, because none of them ever preached on the stage, even on a weekday night. Only the pastor preached and one of the associate pastors. And yet yeah, the cameraman is coming to the stage. Right? It's help your cameraman. Right. But you must remember something. How the supernatural works is like this. Yeah. No one can ever steal your moment. That's Always true. remember this. Yeah. I hear sometimes nonsense. People say, oh, you know what? I'm with this person. They're not giving me a chance. It's a family thing. They don't give me... That is total nonsense. Because the supernatural knows when your moment is right no one can stop your moment yes. he spoke to a pastor and he said to the pastor tell a cameraman to preach yes. because that was my moment mm. so when people say they're not giving me opportunities that is someone who's operating in the flesh because they are looking to advance their career mm. That's true. you never advance your career you wait for the Holy Spirit he opens doors he releases you. He establishes you. You don't establish yourself. You don't even market yourself because he promotes you. Promotion comes from the Lord. Yes. So here I am. I get to the stage, get all the dirty looks in the front row. 2,000 people, people in the balcony looking at me, people in the front row looking at me. They're doing praise and worship. My wife, were you married to me then? Yeah, yeah she was married to me. Okay, just checking. Just checking. <laughs> okay, so she was married to me and she's behind me. In the worship team, they're singing a song. Mm -hmm. And then they start singing a song, a new song that they started. I never heard that song before. Yes. In the middle of the song, they shoved the mic in my face. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I start singing. And when I start singing, I go off tune. <laughs> I kill the whole song. <laughs> now, now I'm embarrassed. I just kill a charismatic church meeting. <laughs> I killed it, butchered it, butchered it. I don't know the song, completely off tune. And I'm embarrassed. I'm like really feeling humiliated now, you know, because uh -huh. I, what I did, and I'm in front of everybody. Everyone's looking at me. Yeah. So I said, let me try a quick comeback. Um, uh, because I butchered, I can't start preaching. So let's go. Can we sing a song that I knew was very easy? Let's, mm. Can we sing Hallelujah? 
Hallelujah is so easy. Hallelujah. Yes. It's like one word right throughout, you know? Right. <laughs> so anyway, so anyway, uh, they, 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 they agree and I start singing. Yes. Now I'm embarrassed, I'm humiliated, I'm afraid. I just want to get off the stage and I'm going to make my pastor upset because I'm preaching my testimony. Yes. Right? So, so all these things are running through my head. You must imagine at this moment. So I just close my eyes. God, please rapture me. Take me from here. Take me from here. Let me get out of here. That's all I'm doing. I don't want to see anyone. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, now the church had aisles because it's 2,000 people. So on the left hand side there's an aisle and I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe about 100, 200, mm. maybe 300 people but there was an aisle of people and they started screaming. Wow. And when I opened my eyes they all fell down. They were slain. The whole aisle. So I'm wondering like, what's, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on here? As I'm trying to process this in my mind people are screaming on the other side. Yeah. I turn on the other side they all fell down. The next minute, the atmosphere in the church was just like the atmosphere in my bedroom. Wow. Yes. And later on I realized, you know, the, the, Benin calls it the kingly anointing. I call it the glory. glory. But the glory had come in. But I didn't know what it was. As I said to you those days, you know, we didn't have Benny Hins yeah. and so on. Yes. We didn't know them at that time. So the Holy Spirit came in. Over 2,000 people were instantly slain. Wow. I could hear the people, in the, I could hear one of the naughty people in the worship team, not my wife, someone else in the worship team. I could hear this girl repenting. Wow. Like everywhere, people are on the floor, stuck to the floor, crying, screaming. 2,000 people. Wow. I turn around to the pastor because, as I said, I'm, my mind is trying to process this thing. Everything, yeah. So I'm turning to the pastor and say, hey, what's going on here? Like, what is this? He's on the floor. He's stuck He's on, the floor. on the floor. He's no help to me. He's on the floor. And I'm the only person standing. The reason I'm standing is because I'm grabbing the pulpit so I don't fall down. <laughs> and what I didn't realize is that my best friend came into the building. Oh, yes. And the glory stayed in that church yes. for over seven months. In seven months, the church grew from 2,000 to 9,000 people. Wow. Because the glory stayed in there. Yes. And if people were just coming to church and giving their life to Jesus, joining the church, it was exploded, exploded, exploded. And of course, my ministry started there. It yes. mushroomed from there. Yes. And, and uh, eventually I got all of the pastor, and, you know, like, and, and, he, and I got to preach the following Sunday, and I got to share my testimony. <laughs> you can. <laughs> testimony. But... The, the Holy Spirit, my best friend, I had not realized how powerful he is. He is powerful. Because I'd only seen him in my bedroom. Yeah. I, you know, I, I mean, he would throw me on the bed. I'd understand that. Mm. But I thought, you know, like it's our fun time, you know? Yes. Our, our, our guy's time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he threw me on the bed. But here, when he entered, the whole church was slain. Wow. So, uh, mm. From there, I started doing miracle crusades. And the same thing will happen in the miracle crusades. Amen. And once we did a crusade next to a shopping mall, and uh, uh, one of the churches pitched up a tent uh, a few hundred meters from the shopping mall. And as people, and many of them not Christians, yes. as they were shopping, they were getting slain in the mall. Oh, fantastic. And now we in the tent, and we're preaching. Yeah. The next bit, I see all these people running into the tent. And they're not Christian too. I'm saying, oh, hey, are we in trouble here? What's going on here? <laughs> they run to the pulpit and they fall at the pulpit giving their life to Jesus. And now I'm still saying, hold on, I didn't come to the punchline yet. I didn't make the altar call yet. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> but, and it just, yeah. but it just started happening. Yeah. Where I started going, he would turn up in his glory. Oh. So there is much more that is available for us in the body of Christ. That's true. And we call that today, we call it the glory. Mm. We call it the glory. And he still comes. He still does it. Even sometimes I'm in my bedroom, he does it. I'm in my car, he does it. 
uh, what, what, what I'm ministering, he does it. Yeah. And he just comes and he takes over. But it's so important what I said earlier on. And we can go on and talk about more and more stuff like that happened. But what is so important, Joanne, is this. Wow. That every person that wants to be used of God. I know there's many people in Bible school that I hear. Yes. There's many pastors that I hear. Yeah. But every person that wants to be used of God has to learn one very important thing. And that is how to die. That's true. How to die. That's true. Because if you don't know how to die, you don't know how to live in the supernatural. Yes, that's true. You must know how to die to yourself. Yeah. And that is the single most important thing. And what does that mean? Well, you know, in my, I'll give you just one example. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people that are watching me and, probably, and people who are here also who are who in Bible schooling ministry. Uh, God would give me a beautiful message to preach on a Sunday, let's say a Sunday morning, right? Yes. Powerful message. And I know I'm pregnant with that word. Yeah. I'll have my word ready. Mm. And you know, in those days I'll have notes. Now I use data projectors, all those things, right? Yes. But I have my notes ready. I'll come to the pulpit to preach, ready to preach. I'm pregnant. And he'll say, close your book. Yes. Mm. Close your book. Now, what do you do at that moment? Because I've seen people who said this. No, God gave me this word. I have to preach the word. Yeah. I have to preach the word. How is anybody going to get saved unless I preach the word? Yes. But the reason you were given that Download. Yes. If it was a test, would you do what you think is right or would you say, have your own way? Yeah. The Holy Spirit needs to have his own So he was, he was he, and he, he's done many times to me, many times over the years. It's really a test. It's to see if I will die to myself. That's true. Or yes. if I want to control the meeting. Yeah. Because it's so easy to preach. It's so easy to control the meeting. It's so easy. Yeah. But when you do it, he does this. He goes to the corner and he sits quietly. He doesn't interfere. Yes. It's all about you now. Yeah. All about you. And, and the thing is, the anointing will be there. Because the anointing and the Holy Spirit are not the same things. Yeah. The Holy Spirit and the anointing are two completely different things. So the anointing will be there. And you think, hey, wow, what an what a anointed meeting. But he never got to do what he wanted to do in his meeting. That's correct. Yeah. That's the difference. Mm. That's the difference. So the only way to know what he wants to do Amen. is for you and the worship team. Because the worship team is another group of people yes. that are the biggest culprits to grieving the Holy Spirit. That's correct, yeah. The biggest culprits. Because they practice a song, they have their song ready, and when he says, change it, they say, no, we practice the song, mm. and we don't know any other song. Mm. Or they want to go with what they've learned. Yeah. And once you do that, God doesn't turn up in the worship. Yeah. I, when, when we started our church early, I, I will not forget one girl uh, didn't listen to me yes. in the worship team, came to me and said, but pastor, why is it when we do such powerful, because you know what they were doing? They were going to the music shops, yes. buying the latest CDs, the latest CD just released. They were getting those music and practicing it identical to the singer. And they'll come to church and they were singing the songs perfect like the CD. And they said, but why when you come, God turns up, but when we are doing such great praise and worship, He doesn't turn up. Yeah. And I said, God is not attracted by entertainment. Yeah. He's not attracted by talent. He's not attracted by how good the music is. He's attracted by people that step aside and allow Him to take over even the worship. And quite often, the latest music is not where God is operating yeah. Most of the time, 99% of the time. It's certain music that you have to tune in 
and you will see the glory on that music. Yeah. When you find the glory, and usually it's not the guys that you find everybody buying their CDs. Yeah. It's not those guys. They, you people do buy these CDs, but there's a certain group of people. Because they spend so many hours mm. in prayer, when they sing, when they write music, he loves it, he turns up. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just entertainment. And so what we have done mm. is we have learned to entertain people in church. Yeah. We have a, a religion, but the Holy Spirit is he's not there. He's not there. Because 10 people fell down, it doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is there. Yes. Because people can get healed, it doesn't mean the Holy Spirit is there. It doesn't mean that. Because the anointing is not evidence mm. of the Holy Spirit. It's not evidence of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Because the anointing is all it is, is power. It's not the Holy Spirit. Think of it this way. In our country, mm. we have an energy provider. Their name is ESCOM, right? Yes. We love ESCOM. We even got candles here just in case <laughs> to tell them how much we love them. So just anyway, in case. just in case. <laughs> but you know the thing about ESCOM? ESCOM mm. is the energy provider. Yes. But when you put your finger into the wall socket, you don't feel ESCOM. ESCOM is not in your house. Yeah. Electricity is in your house. And there's a huge difference. Yes. So power is in your house, yeah. but ESCOM is not in your house. Yeah. It's the same with the anointing. That's the anointing, you, it says, you will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is one entity, and the anointing is a completely different entity. You can have tons of anointing, people soaking in the anointing, yet mm. the Holy Spirit is not there. Remember, what does Acts 10.38 say? Acts 10.38 says there was a man called Jesus of Nazareth. Mm -hmm. He was anointed with two things. It separates it. Yeah. He was anointed first with the Holy Ghost and secondly with power. Mm -hmm. So he, he had on him two things. He had the presence of the Holy Spirit and the anointing. Yes. Two different things. Acts 10 38. It separates it. Even when, when Jesus was led into the wilderness, he got the baptism, but, yeah. but he didn't have the power. Only when he, after 30 days, he returns in the power. So what we have done is we've said, oh, I see the anointing. That must be the Holy Spirit. No, it's not the Holy Spirit. It is your power for you to do great things on the earth because you are anointed by God to do great things. Yeah. But you can go ahead and do great things. Yep. But I would rather let him come and help me to do great things. Yes. Are you, are you with me? So there's a difference in the two. And, 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 and the church doesn't understand these dimensions of the supernatural. Mm -hmm. It's like everything is anointing, anointing, anointing. And the Bible never teaches anyone to run after the anointing. Yeah. In fact, the Bible teaches us to go after the glory. It says you go from glory to glory. glory. Never says you go from anointing to anointing. That's yes. So somewhere along the way, we have said, I'm leading, I'm driving this car. So Holy Spirit, you sit in the back seat. I'm in charge here. This is my thing. Yes. And as long as we've done that, many of us have really robbed ourselves yeah. of what he has for us. Because we settle for a basic anointing episode but we've robbed ourselves of everything heaven can do mm. we have limited God and we've even grieved the Holy Spirit yes. we've grieved him yeah. because if you grieving the Holy Spirit is simply this if God says do that and you do that you grieve the Holy Spirit yeah. that's what it is yes. it means doing something else from what God says if God says close the meeting and you say no I want to continue with this or God says close your book and I want you to lay hands on the sick. And you say, no, I'll do it later. I've got a program. You have grieved the Holy Spirit. Because you followed your program and not the Holy Spirit. It's like praise and worship. Oh, I think we're going along. Well, well uh, at, at church, if we finish with, as Pastor Fadima has finished, when people stand, we actually tell the people to, okay, you can go home now. Nobody wants to go home because the, the presence Spirit. of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I just want to say. Presence of the Holy Spirit is there. Yeah. That's why. You know, like, for example, I taught recently about uh, religion in the charismatic church. Yeah. Now, for many years, people are indoctrinated that you have praise and worship, mm. and the, the power is there, mm. 
if the atmosphere is there, then you preach. Because that's been an indoctrination that we've had. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean praise and worship is not important. Mm. Praise and worship is important. Everybody yes. is a praise and worshiper, yeah. right? Uh, now, but the indoctrination we've had and the religion that we followed for many years is praise and worship and the word. Yes. Always. Mm. Now, I, I actually followed, I actually had, I had a, a man that came to my church once and he said to one of my leaders, he said, why does your pastor do praise and worship, then he does the announcements, and then he does the word? You know, he should go from worship into the word. <laughs> because that's, that's religion. Yeah, that's, that's, religion. that's how religion works in the church. Yeah. So for many years, I would, uh, when I did my 10 crusades, mm. I would make sure the worship was because I don't want to go preach if the worship is like flat. I don't want to preach, there's no power there, you know, because yeah. my understanding was still, uh, you know, it was, it was still religious. Yes. So I always thought, I've got to have good praise and worship, then I preach. Then the things are going to happen. So I would always take my wife because she's a praise and worship leader. Yes. So she would, even if she ended up singing herself, she would just change the atmosphere. And then I could go and preach. Yeah. One day, I think she was pregnant. One day, she never turned up. And I had the worship team from hell. <laughs> <laughs> they were the worst worship team I ever came across. I mean, when I called, I told the guys, yeah. come up, come up to play. They came up st strolling. And the one thing that a worship team must never do, if you have this in your church, fire them. Your worship team must never leave the building. They must never even go outside. Mm. They must sit within five meters of the band area. Mm. Always. Yes. They must not even have a conversation outside. Yeah. If you have those people, fire them. Because they, they are a hindrance. Yeah. They don't understand how God works. Yes. So, this church, the guys came from outside, and the first guy comes up, puts on his guitar, and he's going, ting, ting, he's tuning his keys. Imagine the... People are waiting in this tent meeting. Everyone's <laughs> hungry. There's a hole to go. Yeah. And he's going, ding, ding. <laughs> they killed the meeting. By the time they started, old lady, five minutes had gone. Five minutes. In fact, 30 seconds of delay is all you need to grieve the Holy Spirit. Wow. Sure. In fact, 30 seconds mm -hmm. is also too long. Mm. You need 10 seconds of delay. In 10 seconds, I've seen people grieve the Holy Spirit. Because if you say, come up and play, and they delay, 10 seconds gone, mm. he's grieved. He's grieved. Because he's very sensitive. So, these guys took so long, they killed the meeting. So now I'm... I'm so now this, this is before the altar call. I'm in the back going up to preach. Now I'm going to preach. Now I'm sitting there going up to preach. The guest, uh, the, the host is there. I'm saying, what do I do? What do I do? There's no power here. There's no anointing here. How am I going <laughs> to preach? And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said this. Did Jesus do praise and worship before he ministered? Before he healed the sick? I said, uh, No. And he said this to me, neither do you need it because it's inside you. The supernatural is inside you. Yeah. So the meeting is dead, dead, dead. I walk up to the stage. The moment I touch the mic, the glory fills the place. Amen. And I realized, yeah. I realized because I'm a carrier, mm -hmm. I can manifest the supernatural anywhere. Amen. In my house, in my car, in anywhere, because even with no music, yes. with no music, no worship. Of course, that threatened the, the <laughs> livelihood of the worship team, but anyway. <laughs> but now I understand that that's why sometimes mm -hmm. the glory will come before praise and worship. Yes. I've seen guys ministering, yeah. they never preach, and the glory came in. Yes. Because the glory is not carried by the worship team. Yeah. The glory is inside you. Amen. 
how much God trusts you mm. is how much he's willing to release. Oh, that's powerful. I mean. That's it. Mm. So the glory is always, you're a carrier of the glory. And when you end up in the right environment, you can at any moment, you can be in a shopping mall mm. and you can manifest the glory. I've been in, 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 in places where there are people who are completely unsaved. They, one, once a family said to me, oh, we just want you to bless the house. I said, I didn't yes. come here to bless the house. I came to tell you about Jesus. So, you know, so I, I asked, I, I, I dug into the supernatural. I got a word of knowledge and I let the glory flow. Yes. So every person is a carrier of the glory. Amen. Whether they've listened to worship or not. Yes. You're a carrier. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do praise and worship. Yes. No. Praise and worship is very powerful in the anointing. Mm. So if I want to build the anointing, I must have a good praise and worship team. Mm. But the glory is something completely different. The glory, you're a carrier. And so you manifest it anywhere you go. And, and from there, my whole understanding and perspective changed. Because as I said, I followed religion. I always thought I got to have praise and worship. They're yeah. not singing nice songs. They're not singing now. I just, yeah. huh? I love, I love my worship team, and my wife is part of. The, I love my wife, so and she's part she of the worship team. Beautiful. Yeah, and she looks cute, you know, and she likes me as well. But anyway, but whether they flow with me or not, mm. the glory will still come, because right. he's not coming because of them. He's coming because of me, because I yeah. am his friend. Amen. I'm his best friend, and yeah. he loves me. He oh. trusts me. He won't leave me. And that's how it is with the supernatural. So sometimes, you know, I, I learned these things Wonderful. because of him. You know, and, and I begin to understand these things because of him. Yeah. But if we will only open our hearts. In fact, right now, if you're watching me, if you will say, Holy Spirit, I want to know you. Mm. He will just turn up. Because, you know, all this time we've been talking because you carry such a powerful glory on your life as well. Thank you. And because there's the presence of God here. Because, I mean, we were going to go through some stuff and we never got to go to the stuff. I just want to say we're going to do this another time. We'll questions. have to do it another time, right? But <laughs> we will even get people to ask questions. But, yes. but somehow, and I know you want to know about how I got saved, mm. but somehow he said, they need to know me. Yes. They need to know me. Yeah. It's not just simply a soaking thing. It's not just simply listening to music. Yes. Listening to music does not bring in the glory. Yeah. Listening to music can sometimes be entertaining. Yeah. The only time music is effective is if you engage the music. If you do not engage the music and you only listen to it, it does nothing. So if I put on a good worship music, mm. but I'm not engaging it, if I don't sing along, in other words, if I don't worship God at the moment, yes. that music is entertainment. No matter who's there, yeah. it's entertainment. The only time I draw from it is if I engage the music. It's powerful. Okay. Sure. So, mm. so, so understand this here. God will come and, and you know, God will come because you, you confess the word. Yeah. God will come mm. because he trusts you. Yes. But if he does not trust you, if he does not trust you, no matter how many tricks you do, he won't turn up. Yeah. He will not turn up. I've, well, yeah. I need to tell you, when you, were, when you were in America, there was a lady who interviewed you mm -hmm. in, in, in one of her programs. And it was... Suzanne. Uh, yes, she's Suzanne. Treatment, yeah. She's uh, part of Katie Souza's team. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. And when I was listening to you to live, and the Holy Spirit hit me so hard that I fell off my bed. <laughs> <laughs> and the next morning I went to church and I told him I was listening to pastors of Moodley and, and I'm still drunk in the Holy Spirit. You know, because I invited him because I asked him yeah. his welcome in, yeah. in my house, in my life. And all, all we are yeah. is just a glove, that's it. Yes. We, we are just a glove. Mm. He is the one that fills the glove. Yes. And, and, and because we've allowed him, you see, we could have done this, right? We could have done this t t tonight. You have a list of questions, right? Which, <laughs> I, didn't even, which I didn't even pre prepare for. <laughs> I like to just talk really, but, but you have a list of questions. Let's say, let's say you ask me a question. 
I responded. Mm. I stopped. You asked me another question, I responded to that question yes. and stopped. Yeah. Yes. We would then have a very intellectual and deeply spiritual conversation. That's correct. We would have a great Christian conversation. Yeah. And some, a lot of people will love that. Yeah. But he wants you that's watching. Yes. And he wants you guys that are here. Mm. He doesn't want you to just to come and say, oh, we went to talk to this talk show with Evangelist Johan and it was nice. Yeah. He doesn't want that. No. He says, I want him and I want him and I want her and I want her and I want her, <laughs> him. I want them to have an encounter with me Amen. because I want to change their destiny. Yes. I want to change their world. I want them to see things the way I see things. Yes. I want them to do things they've never done before. Yes. I want them to experience things they've never experienced before. Mm -hmm. But I want them to know me as a person. I want them to have a deep relationship with me. Because only when the relationship comes, yes. does the leading come. Because you can't, you can be led by some tools that you can learn. Mm -hmm. But true leading from the Holy Spirit comes when He is everything in your life. Well, you're talking, it's, I can feel the love for deep. Because I'm so relaxed when I'm sitting here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can just feel the Holy Spirit here. But I can feel He's, he's showing me and, and He's happy. Because mm. I mean, the He's the, the, he's is, the is director it? of the show. Yeah. And yeah. he's happy how it turned out. Yeah. <laughs> he just told me to put my So there's down. this people here that's, that are sitting here and people yes. are watching us online. And, and you know, it's not by chance. I know you've heard this many times. Yeah. But it's not by chance that you are here or you're watching online today. Mm -hmm. Because the Holy Spirit made sure you connect to the show. Amen. He made sure. Yes. Because He wants to connect to you. Amen. So all we are, the Bible says that we are the light of the world. Mm. We are the salt of the, of the earth. So all we've done is we've salted the show. Mm. <laughs> we have, we've, we've been the light. Yes. But he's the one behind the light. Amen. And he's saying, hey, now that you have a revelation of me, yes. I want you to know me. Mm. And I want to know you. Mm. And I want to have a relationship with you. Amen. I want to become everything. Yes. Everything in your life. Mm. And, 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 and sometimes, you know, like, and sometimes my wife will tell me, she'll, she'll, she'll share with you. Sometimes, I'll, although I love my dog and I love my family, I love everyone, <laughs> uh, yeah. I just want to be alone with him. Yes. I don't want anyone else. I just want to be alone with him. Mm. I want to, sometimes I just, uh, uh, I just want to go away somewhere and be alone with him. Yeah. Because it's, it's that relationship where Nothing else matters in the world. Yeah. Nothing else is as important as Him. And when you come to that place where nothing else matters, where maybe you've got a hot date, and, and, and he, says, uh, he says, well, don't you want to spend time with me? Yes. And you, and you say, bye-bye date. I'm going to be with my, the, the love of my soul. He's looking for that kind of relationship. He's looking for a relationship where you're willing to say, I will sacrifice yes. just to be with you because you are my everything. When you come to that place and there's that level of trust where you can die to yourself, you can die to your ambitions, die to everything, and you can say, what is it mm. you want me to do? Why have you done this in my life? What is your plan for my life? Or what can we do together? When you come to that place, then you see true leading from the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because now, when you go shopping, he'll tell you, don't go to that store. You're looking for that dress? Yes. Go to that store. It's there. Yeah. He'll tell you, uh, when you're going to buy a car, he'll tell you, no, don't buy that car. That's not for you. Yeah. I can get you the same car, but it'll be much better than that. Yeah. And half the price. And, and this is the way yeah. I've learned. My children do this. Yes. When they go shopping, I do this. Yeah. And, and so, so people think it's only spiritual. No. He becomes so close to you mm. that even when you're going to a restaurant, 
Yes. And you're saying, what do I choose in the menu? And he'll say, have you tried that? Yes, I do ask him that. <laughs> so it is that intimacy yeah. that he wants with us. It's that level of intimacy. And when we have that level of intimacy with him, then we start to see things we never saw before. Well, uh, Apostle Siva, what you said there, now understand me uh, yeah. as well. For the three years when I was in Bible school and all that, God took a lot of people out of my life. Mm. And I was quiet. I was alone. He didn't even send a man to me. Only my dog was with me. And, uh, and now I understand why you say that he wanted, the Holy Spirit wanted intimate for me to mm. grow with him yes. and, and, and to trust it's him. It's healing, restoration, yes. but the trust, the trust, that is it. Because, you know, you could have a talk show mm. because, hey, you want everyone to know your name. You want a talk show because, well, someone else is doing it. Yeah. Or you can have a talk show because, well, it seems to be the good Christian thing to do right now. Yeah. And, and what else is better than a talk show? Yes. Or you can have a talk show where God says, I want to influence people. Yes. I'm looking for a screen yes. to do it through. I'm looking for a person who will surrender to me that I could do it through. Well, I must say, when I started this talk show, God said, uh, you know, you need to do a talk show. I tried to ignore him because I, was, I didn't hear that right. No. You know, it was, I had to pray. And when God showed me so many signs, I want you to do this. Mm. And... Uh, yeah, I'm sitting. Amen. I'm not sure how we are in time. I think we've got like, oh, we've got like about three hours left. <laughs> uh, so if, if it's okay with you. Yes, please. I just want to pray for everyone that, would be uh, that is online and those who are here. And Joshi, if you play, just play some strings for me, please. And if you're saying, hey, listen, I, I understand today that, yes, I talk to the Holy Spirit. Yes, I, do. I pray and I also talk to him and I know he's there. You're saying, that's great, but that's not what he wants. He doesn't want that. There's a beautiful couple in the front here, two of you. Uh, you're a couple, right? Both of you in the front. How many years are you married? How many years are you married? 23 years. It's your mom and dad. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. 23 years? No, it's longer. 63 years. 60 years. Now, you've been married for 60 years. You know each other so well. In fact, uh, she's, the, the, she's your whole world. I know he's your whole world. Because you've been together. You've grown with each other. And you, if, even, even when it was rocky, you always stood together because of this love, this relationship. And that relationship is what keeps you so strong together. That's how the relationship is with the Holy Spirit. He wants a relationship that is beyond any other relationship we have. He wants a level of intimacy that's beyond any other intimacy we have. You can, you can even, I, and I'm paraphrasing this. It's like you have a new baby and the Holy Spirit is still more important than the new baby. Amen. He wants to, you to come to that level, that place. When we come to that place, He starts to open up a world we've not seen before. But, we can take little bits of him, little bits of him. But like your mom and dad are married for so many years. They know each other intimately. They know when, 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 when someone's not feeling well, someone's down. If there's a crisis, they stand together. They support each other. They're always there to help each other. If someone says, I'm feeling so weak today, the other one is there to help them. Because of that intimacy. That is what fellowship, the word fellowship means that. The word fellowship is not knowing about the Holy Spirit. It's not saying, oh, Holy Spirit, come into our meeting. It's not that. That's not fellowship. Fellowship is like what your mom and dad have. The relationship they have with each other. It is so, 60 years, it's so deep, so intimate. There may have been times when they wanted to kill each other, but they still love each other. They still love each other. 
it's such a close relationship. Yes. Yeah. And if and if they go walking in the mall and he turns on and sees someone, oh, he's gonna be in big trouble because he knows exactly how she feels. Exactly. He yeah. knows exactly how she feels. He's gonna be in trouble when he comes home. Because he's been around for 60 years. Yeah. That's what the Holy Spirit is looking for. Okay. He's not looking for church and religion. He's not looking for uh, studying more about him. He's looking for someone that will say, I want you to be everything in my life. I want you to be my best friend. I want you to be my lover. I want you to be my spouse. I want you to be my children, my family. I want you to be my whole life. And when you surrender, it calls, it's called, that's called fellowship. When you surrender, all the other stuff come in. But because of your bond, there is this trust that is unshakable. Unshakable. And when you come to that trust, there is nothing the Holy Spirit will not do for you. Amen. Nothing He will not do for you. And no one can take that intimacy away from you. Amen. You can be in any crisis and He'll turn up. He'll always be there to open things for you. He'll open doors that are closed. Yes. Why? Because, you know, you know when, when you're in love with someone, you give them everything. Yes. You give them everything. Mm. You have Valentine's Day every day. <laughs> That's real love. Yes. The Holy Spirit does that. He opens doors. He does things that just to push you up because you're so close to Him. Mm. So He's not looking for an acquaintance. He's looking for someone that says, I want to have an intimate relationship with you. Amen. I want you to be everything in my life. And I want you to be number one. I want you to be number one. When I get up in the morning, I want, to, I, I want you to be the first person I greet. Yes. When I go to bed, I want you to be the last person I greet. I want to, when anything I do, I want you by my side. Even if I go to a function, I want yes. you with me. Yeah. I want you with me. Mm. He wants that level of relationship. It's called fellowship. Mm. That is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, Paul said this, he said, we want to go to a town and the Holy Spirit came and hindered us. He said, don't go there. Then there's another town, we weren't sure to go and he promptly said, go there. Mm. Then someone lied to them and the Holy Spirit said, they're lying. How did, how did Peter know they were lying? It's a level of intimacy that is so tight, so tight to the Holy Spirit. That even when the whole world is screaming and crying because of some pandemic mm. and people are so afraid, you just know everything's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go right on top of the storm and I'm 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 actually expanding, I'm surviving. Why? Because I can't fail if he's with me. Amen. I can't fail if he's with me. And sometimes people may think, but aren't you betraying Jesus? No, you're not, because the Trinity is one. Mm. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one. But we're in the time of fellowship yes. with the Holy Spirit. Yes. We're not in the Old Testament where the Father was distant, but we still connected to the Father. Yes. We're in a dispensation where we interlocked with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Spirit of God and us have become one Spirit. Mm. So the Holy Spirit today He's crying for intimacy. Yes. He's crying for intimacy. That's what he wants. And he wants you to be the center of his life and him to be the center of your life. That's what he wants. And if you can surrender, you can surrender. And you know, surrender means, sometimes just means, I don't know everything. I just want to surrender. I don't know everything, but I just want to know God. I just want to walk with him. If you can surrender, He'll come in immediately. Immediately. And He'll help you along the way. Amen. And tomorrow, you surrender again. Father, not my will, but your will be done. Amen. Holy Spirit, what is it that you want to do today? Yes. What should we do now, Holy Spirit? And again, He'll come. Amen? Amen. So, 
I'm going to stand and pray. So I'm praying for you guys online. Yes. And those of you here, if, you, if you're saying that's what I want, you can quickly stand to your feet. I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. Let's do that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just lift your hands up right where you are. Lift your hands up right where you are. Right where you are. Thank you. And those of you watching me online as well, just lift your hands up right where you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just, hmm. Just give me a little more strings, slightly more strings, a little more strings. He's already here. And many of you are feeling his mighty presence because he is this real. He is this real. He's this real. And Holy Spirit, I love you. I love you. I adore you. I worship you. I worship you. It is not by might, nor even by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. It is not by might, nor even by power, by my spirit says the Lord of hosts mm. now is the right time and those of you watching me online just tell him simply say Holy Spirit I want to know you just tell him I want to know you intimately Holy Spirit just tell him Holy Spirit I want to have fellowship with you I want you to be number one in my life. Holy Spirit, I want to walk every day with you. Holy Spirit, I want to surrender to your wisdom. I want to surrender to your understanding. I want to surrender to your authority. I want to surrender to your power. Be Lord in my home. Be Lord in my life. 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 In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Be Lord in my life. Be Lord in my life. Be Lord in my life. Tell him again. Be Lord in my life. Have your own way in my life. Tell him again. Have your own way in my life. If you're married, tell him. Have your own way in my marriage. Have your own way with my children. Have your own way in my business. Have your own way in my ministry, Holy Spirit. I will not hinder you. I will not grieve you. I will not quench you. Ah. Everyone, with your hands lifted up. There's a cloud of His presence here right now. It's a cloud of His presence. Glory is here. And I love you. I love you, Holy Spirit. Don't worry about falling down. That's not important. Just receive that presence all over you. Hmm. I pray. I pray for your spiritual eyes and the spiritual ears to be open. I pray for the spiritual sense, touch and taste to be opened. In Jesus' name. I pray. And I pray. Woo! Whoa! Oh. <laughs> I pray your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
In Jesus' name. Can I get one of the catchers quickly? Quickly, or just one catcher? Come up on the stage quickly, quickly. Quick, 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 quick. Hallelujah. Yeah, okay, come here. Hallelujah. Just stand, uh, just take the mic, Andrea, just stand here. The power of God's coming all over you. You can just see that, just, yeah. You should catch it that side, not this side. Yeah, the power of God's very strong. There it is, sweetie. It's all over you. That's His glory. That's His glory. There it is. There it is. And those of you watching me on this on the live stream, just put your hands towards the screen. There it is. That's His glory coming on you. Some of you are getting drunk as you're watching me. Someone watch me. Your name is Kali. Kali. God is touching you right now. You always felt rejected, but there was a lie from the devil. God loves you. He loves you. He's filling you right now. He is everything you need. Everything you need. There's a pastor watching me. There's a pastor watching me. You're saying, Pastor, how can I get the Holy Spirit into my church? Change your format. Your church needs to go back to prayer. When you started, you started with prayer. You have moved, sir, so far away from prayer that you've moved away from the Holy Spirit. Get your whole church back into prayer. Preach prayer. Do prayer. Meeting after meeting. And watch how he'll invade them your meetings. He'll invade your meetings. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And someone's got a problem on your knee, on your right hand side, right by your kneecap. God's healing you right now. You notice the pain is gone. Pain is gone. Someone else, you're suffering with arthritis. You've been suffering with arthritis for a long time. Sometimes you feel like your hand is turning on its own. The pain is so intense. God's healing you right now. He's healing you right now. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hmm. Those of you right here, right here in this row in front of me, all of you in the back there, quickly lift your hands up, all of you. The power of God, all of you, quickly, quickly, lift up high. Power of God's coming on you. Power of God's coming on you. Catch us quickly, quickly. One, two, three. There it is. 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 There's there's it. There's it. Hallelujah. Don't worry about falling. That's not important. Let's glory just fill you right now. Woo. Hallelujah. Now, who's the person there in that three rows? 
Someone's been praying and asking God, I want to have dreams. Where's the, who's that person want to have dreams? You've been asking God for dreams. Who is that? Who is that? Is someone there in the last three rows? Don't be afraid. Who's the person? He said, God, I want to have dreams. Don't come after the meeting. I just want to release that over you right now. Who is that person? On the count of three. One. Two. Bring me this young girl here, right here. Yeah, you with the jacket. Yeah, you. This, this one here, right here, right here. Yes, you, come here. Just, yeah, just stand in the front here. Just stand in the front. Just lift your hands up. Don't worry, we're not going to let even touch you. Just lift your hands up. Pick it up, Josh. Hallelujah. God's power is all over you, dear. All over you. All over you. Sick. See, he knows us even when we doubt ourselves. He knows us. Where's the person with their right hand side leg on their kneecap? They're, they're in pain on their kneecap, right hand side leg, right here. Where's that person? Where's that person? Quickly. God wants to heal you. Don't worry with someone else. If it's you, where's that person? Your dad. Is it you, sir? Uh, is it you? I, there's someone in pain right now. There's someone in pain right now on the kneecaps, on the right hand side, on the joint. Where's the person? Don't get frightened <laughs> all the stuff happening. There's a person, God wants to heal you right now. Where's the person? On your kneecap, right here, on your joint. When you walk, you're in pain. If you come to me after the meeting, it's over, you won't get the, the healing because right now there's open heaven. So if you're worried what anyone will think, you're gonna miss it. Quickly, I'm gonna count to three again. And if you miss it, you miss it. One. Is it you, sir? It, how the supernatural works, it opens for a minute. And if you don't respond, it closes and you miss the miracle. Then we have to pray in faith. But if your faith is not ready, you don't get healed. So when the supernatural opens, you must respond at that moment. Otherwise you miss your miracle. You've got a problem on your back, here in your right here, you have a problem right here. Right there. Bring him up here, let's fix his back. Come, let's fix your back. God is good all the time I want to show you something I want to show you something right well let's see what happened to your back I don't know hmm. it has been so for uh, quite a while is it painting right now yeah it's painting right now it's painful look at my face Jesus is going to heal you right now Bring me a chair, I want to see something. Bring me a chair quickly, I want to see something. Yeah, just sit in the chair, so give me another chair quickly, quickly, quick, quick, quick. You know what to do? Just put your leg on the chair and see something. Which side pains? That side. Which side? That side. This side. 
You know why that side pains? Yeah. Tell, tell him why that side pains. Because this one is uh, short. This one is longer. And this one is short. Did you know your one leg is shorter? Did you know? Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> okay, let's fix your leg. We fix your leg and we'll grow your leg and your back will get healed as well. Okay? Come on, set your hands toward him. Let's grow this leg. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, there it is, a little bit more. I command this leg to grow, grow, and the back to be healed. Be! Be made whole. Be made whole. Be made whole. Both your legs are 100% perfect now. They both are equal. Okay, stand up for me quickly. Come, stand up. Okay. We'll just walk up and down for me quickly, quickly. Walk up and down. Come back, come back. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened to your back? What happened to your back, sir? What happened to your back? Praise the Lord. Your back, what happened to your back? It's feeling better already. Is the pain gone? It's virtually gone, yes. How many percent? Oh, about 80%. It's still a little. 80%? Yeah. Okay, look at my face. Look at your face. God doesn't do 80%, He does 100. Amen. Right? Okay, now. Let's fix it, 100. I'm asking you to do something. When you do it, it'll be 100. You ready? I want you to slowly bend down and touch as far as you can go. Come up again. Do it again. Again. Do it again. Again. Woo. <laughs> that was it. Do it again one more time. One more time. Now? Yeah, it feels okay. Is it gone? Yeah. Completely? Yeah. 100%. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give Jesus a hand. Now, it's very easy to grow someone's leg if the Holy Spirit is present. It's an easy thing. It's easy to even to do all this stuff, but the Holy Spirit has to be present. If He's not there, then miracles become difficult. But when He's present, the supernatural is natural. Amen. Joanne, so, Evangelist Johan, you are going to give you your mic back, right? Because <laughs> you're going to end your show. You're going to send all those people home. <laughs> well, I just want to say thank you, um, Apostle Silver Mutley, my spiritual father. Thank you for using your stage, yeah. your beautiful church, to host uh, Talk About Jesus talk oh, show. We love you guys. And I want to say each and everyone who's here, Thank you for coming out and make time to spend time with our Lord, our Savior, and with the Holy Spirit. I want to thank you, the Holy Spirit. He was here and he took over. And I want to say everybody who's on a live streaming, thank you for being part of this live streaming. Please take this opportunity to share it again to friends and family. And if you've got a powerful testimony, please contact uh, us and uh, you're welcome to be on the show because uh, the devil he hates testimonies and we like to go destroy him i always tell people hmm. we're here to make uh, heaven full and hell empty so from me evangelist joanne god bless and remember i love you and jesus love you amen amen, amen. wow